Hey, Star Wars fans, welcome to the Credible Nerds Podcast. It's the Bad Batch after show. We're going to be talking about episodes 9 and 10 of season 2 of the Bad Batch. Uh, pretty basic episodes, uh, not too much writing on the fate. Well, I guess there's a little moment there with Omega was in trouble, but overall, it's just another adventure of the week type episode. Uh, I enjoyed it, it was entertaining, but as far as playing into the overall story of the whole galaxy or even the fate of the Bad Batch, not too many implications, long-term implications or effects. But I liked it, it was a fun watch. Uh, What about you, Harry? Like overall first impressions of these last two episodes, what do you think? Uh, It was a, I mean, I guess it was, at this point it's typical Bad Batch. (laughs) Yeah. Um off on an adventure um things don't go as they plans they adapt overcome move on and and succeed in the ends um not great but not bad yeah yeah yes and that is the voice that is the image if you're watching on youtube of our of my co-host for the bad batch season two reviews harry all the way out from michigan how you doing I'm pretty good. Thanks for joining. Glad to be game. here. Yeah. So you guys have gotten a lot of ice storms lately, huh? Well, just the, just the one all day yesterday. <laughs> all day. Just one big one. <laughs> one big one. Yeah. So same with us out here in the West in Utah. We're hitting a lot of snowstorms. Snowed all day yesterday. So it's good to sit down and talk Star Wars after all. Hard day's work of clearing snow from the driveway and for you clearing out fallen branches and melting ice huh? so it's always good to sit down and talk about star wars and we're talking bad batch uh so this episode starts off kind of a mission again from sid sid ends up he has she has this mine that she doesn't know much about so she sends the bad batch out to kind of do some recon find out what's there maybe collect some some of this mineral, um, uh, Ipsium, I think is what it's called. Um, so they, they go out there and they're, they find the mine, they get in the, to the, to the, you know, inside and they start looking for some, some of this mineral and Wrecker is left outside to, well, first Wrecker and Wrecker and Omega left outside to keep watch, make sure things are okay. And then Omega has to go in to get the the mineral, extract the mineral, because uh, it's a tight place, right? So she, they need her small frame to get in there and do the work. So what they do is they find the mineral, and I guess inside of the mineral there's a, a liquid, or they somehow sh- extract something from this mineral deposit that's liquidy, and then they put it in a container, and that's how they transport it. And, of course, it's very... Volatile, <laughs> <It's> unstable, <laughs> just like everything else in Star Wars. I think you texted me earlier about that, right? It's another thing that's very unstable in Star Wars. Yep. So, uh, while Omega's in there, uh, Wreckers they parked the ship, the the Marauder, and then kind of walked around this this uh, path. So it's kind of hidden from view, right? Yeah. If you're standing in front of the mine, you can't really see the ship. This is the impression I got, if I remember correctly. So Wrecker's sitting there looking around, doing his thing, daydreaming or whatever. And some little kid, well, later we found his little kid, but this person steals the ship because they didn't lock it. Which no one locks their ships in Star Wars, apparently. Right? <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> yeah. I think most of the time that's... Um, they're in a spaceport, right? So there's security. No one's going to just walk in and take off on on a ship. But they're out in the middle of nowhere. And I think they did it in that one episode with the the giant robot kaiju. where They just lower the hatch. They walk out. So they're not concerned about their ship being stolen. So this time it gets stolen. They come out. They're all mad at Wrecker. Like, why didn't you do anything? He's like, I didn't know. So this big, they're all mad at each other for it. Um... So they're like, well, what are we going to do? We're going to walk to this town that's kind of close, I guess. But there's this big storm coming, so they got to hurry. So they start walking through this this uh, canyon. 
And as they're walking through, these animals start stampeding through the the canyon that they're in, kind of like the Lion King with Simba and um, Mufasa. And <clears throat> so they 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 take cover. They're able to kind of escape that, but they drop the the container with the ipsium. And they're like, oh, be careful. It's very volatile. It could explode if it gets, you know, damaged or something like that. So some foreshadowing there. And then they're able to, from there, get past the be- the beasts run by and they find another opening just as the storm's coming. And as they're running from the storm to get into this this new cave, this new part of the mine, um, Echo drops the, no, not Echo, Tech. Sorry. Tech. Yes. Echo is gone now. So Tech drops the container, and the wind picks it up, and it kind of flies through the air, smashes into the side of the wall, and blows up right above the the entryway, of course. So then they're trapped inside this mine. Um, So what are they going to do? (laughs) What do you think so far about this part of the the episode, Harry? Are you liking it? Well, it was, I mean, it was interesting. There's a new mineral we're not aware of or sure of um it's volatile why is everything volatile um it 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 is a kind of cool to see omega getting like important jobs right they they trust her now Mm -hmm. and there's things that um before they would not have let her do hunter would have been like no she's too young she's too inexperienced somebody else will have to do it and now they're they're kind of putting more weight on her shoulders and letting her be a real part of the teams Mm -hmm. like even more um, and she's making some decisions here and uh, kind of making things happen up until this point and where they get trapped. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we start to see some some splinters in between them, in between the, the group. You know, Echo's, or rather... Tech. Tech. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that for a bit, sorry. Tech is mad at Wrecker, Wrecker's mad at Tech, Hunter's mad at everybody, Omega's mad at uh, Tech for some, he's he's not listening to her or trusting her or something. So they're starting to become a little fractured, right? Echo's gone. I think he was a voice of reason a lot of times. Um, now that you look back on it. Um, or just another person to kind of diffuse the situation. And and there's only four of them now. And I was watch, as I was watching... Uh, this episode and the the next episode, episode ten, I did notice like something's missing, right? You know, and obviously it's Echo, but even then, it's like this is the only time their group has been four. Because um, before they had Crosshair, and then when Crosshair left, they had, they still had Echo, and so it's it's getting smaller. And even you know Omega, she's part of the group, but she's not a full full blown soldier. So really. There's three adults in Omega that helps out as much as she can. So I thought that was, it was noticeable that there was the, the group dynamics are different. And I think we're going to see that come into play as the season goes on. Um, someone, uh, someone wrote on one of the Star Wars Facebook group pages that I'm on. I think it might have been the Rebel Force radio page. How in previous episodes, like with the very first episodes of Hunt, we see the Bad Batch with Hunter. It might have been even in the Clone Wars uh, series where they had these special abilities and Hunter was able to sense things before, you know, they were, before they happened. Kind of almost like the Force, but not really the Force. And um, we see that here earlier because when... They come out of the, the cave, uh, the mine, at first before the ship gets stolen. Just like right before it gets stolen, Hunter realizes something's going to happen. Something's wrong. And he starts to run towards the ship, and then it takes off, right? So we, we do see, we still see some of that, that sense that Hunter has that makes him, you know, his enhanced sense from the Bad Batch. Wrecker has the strength. Tech has this, the smart stuff, the analytical skills. And Hunter has this almost force-like ability. And a couple episodes ago of this podcast, we were talking about how is Omega force-sensitive? Because it seems like she was able to sense things that, you know, before they happened. 
And as I saw that earlier with Hunter, I kind of realized, well, maybe what Omega has is just that capability like Hunter has. Do you see a connection there, Harry? Or do you, do we still think she's force sensitive or both? Um, I guess I don't know. I mean, that's a definite possibility. I had kind of forgotten about Hunter's power, yeah. his ability, because yeah. it hasn't been used much. Yeah. And when they do and, use it, it's very subtle. Right. So that's a definite possibility um, that it's more leaning that way than the force. Um, so I, I guess for me, I, it's up in the air. Yeah. Um, but I guess I would lean more towards Hunter's ability and and being you know um, I don't programmed in with uh, you know the DNA tampering mm-hmm. um, versus versus the the force. Because then that goes again into all the questions like, are clones really people? You know, would, would they have the ability to end up with the force like a normal born person? Um, mm-hmm. Which has been an argument, right, the whole time. Yeah. That they're not, so therefore none of them will ever have the force and none will ever be a Jedi. Or, um, But if they are, then out of those millions, surely a few of them would have been force sensitive. Yeah. That would be kind of cool if, like, the last season of The Bad Batch, or at some point, we find a there's a clone Jedi or a clone Force user, right? That all of a sudden, <laughs> out of nowhere, or he was hid, hidden away, or maybe he's a dark side user that Palpatine had been hiding somehow, but, you know, that there there's a Force user that's a clone that would be cool a kind of a cool reveal at the end of the series if that were to happen but uh anyways um so they're starting they're stuck in the mine omega is bored so she wandered well i think she tells them she's gonna go look for something go explore see if there's another way so she goes and finds more of the the ipsium and starts to mine it and pull it out Um, but it's in this Um, part of the cavern that's you know there's a a deep you you can't see the bottom it's kind of off to the side so as she's reaching for this this really big load of ipsium she falls and tech's there as well he had a wandering over there to find out make sure she's okay so he sees her fall and then tech relays that information then jumps after her and they end up falling in this water pool, and it takes them, it's like a river, it takes them underground, and they end up coming out in this other area of a pool that they're able to get out of the water and kind of reassess where they're at. And eventually, uh, Wrecker and Hunter follow them, and they all end up in the same place in this cavern, but they find a, a hole that they're able to blow up using the Ipsium and create a bigger hole so they can get out. And they find this this city that they were looking for. They go to the city. It's deserted. No one's there. And that's how that episode ends. Episode 9 ends like that. So you kind of know there's going to be a follow-up to it, uh, to this episode. So basically this episode was set up for the next episode. Um, as a standalone, this episode wasn't that interesting. Um but as a part of the two-parter, two-parter episode, I th- it was better, right? Any thoughts on this first episode? Anything that I missed? No, I don't think so. But for sure, as a standalone episode, it would have been kind of bad, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but as just a lead-up, um, it it does create a lot of crisis, and because they're stuck, right? They don't have any ability to contact Sid. And um, they don't have a ship, um, don't have enough cash to even buy a ship. So, like, mm-hmm. and I think that was discussed at one point. Like, well, if we get to town, how are we even going to get a ship? Yeah. Um, and then once they're there, of course, it's deserted and there's really nothing there. Um, but um, I'm trying to think if it was at the end of this or the beginning of the next episode when they're able to contact Sid. Um, uh, I think it was at the end. Yeah. And she basically tells them they're on their own because mm-hmm. she's busy with something else. Yeah, she's like, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of dumb. Kind of lame anyway. Um, but when they were in that pool there, when they came out of the waterfall and landed in the pool and were able to 
get out onto the bank. Um, there was a lot. It looked like there was a lot of that Ipsy material at the bottom of that pool because the whole pool, the whole cavern was lit up blue because of that mineral shining through the water. And so it's basically the mother load for that, that mineral, right? Right. So I was expecting them at some point to at least talk about it, be like, hey, we got to go back because that's a lot of money right, sitting right there that we have access to. Maybe we can buy a ship or use that to trade or come back to Sid with this huge amount of, of, of mineral that we found in this cavern. But it didn't, that didn't go anywhere. So, uh, so next episode, they're, they're uh, trying to rebuild this speeder bike. Um, and Omega has the idea, well, we can, we can track the, the gonk droid and that'll tell us where the ship is most likely because they can, they couldn't find the ship because the thief had turned off the transponder or, you know, wasn't, so it wasn't able to be tracked, but they could still track the gonk droid. So they do that. They figure out where he is and they, they're able to fix the bike and they're all, it's kind of humorous. They all jump on the bike and it's like falling apart. <laughs> it's barely running, but they're all on it, uh, going to the, following the signal. So, but they make it, they arrive to the, where the ship is and it's, it's a mine. It's an open pit mine type thing. And around the mine, there's a, a village where all the workers live. So, uh, the gonk droid is in that village and they end up going down there and finding the gonk droid as well as the person who stole the ship. And it's a little, it's a kid. It's like a teenage kid. And so during this first part of the episode, while they're, um, you know, fixing the speeder and head into the, to where the gonk droid is, we see the story of this kid. What happens? He, he steals the ship he radios back to his boss and says, hey, I got something cool for you. He lands, and <clears throat> um, to get in and out of that open pit mine, there's a ray shield that they have to turn off and on. So he goes, he lowers the ship into the, the pit and parks it down there. And it's basically this guy who is running the mine, and he has all these people working for him, and he has a contest every, I don't know, if, it sounded like it was every month, but where whoever earns the most is rewarded. And we find out later in the episode that they, he rewards them with extra food. Like (laughs) it was just a bowl of soup too. (laughs) It was like, (laughs) wow, thanks guy. (laughs) So the, the winner of who earns the most gets an extra bowl of soup and the rest have to fight over another bowl of soup. So they're all motivated by food to do well. And so the kid, he stole the ship thinking, Hey, this will put me as the top earner. So then I'll be top dog and get extra food. Um, but as it turns out, he isn't. He's, he's like, the, this other guy ends up winning. So he's mad about that. But uh, in the meantime, um, he they're going to strip the, the ship, sell it for parts. And so they start doing that. And about that time is when the Bad Batch shows up and meets up with this kid. Uh, do you remember his name? Uh, I think it's Benny. Yeah, that's right. It's Benny. They find Benny and say, hey, where's our ship? And they kind of bully him, bully him in to tell him where it is because he doesn't want to get in trouble from the main boss guy whose name is... Moko. Moko. So they they convince him to do it and they'll, they say they'll let him go if if they if he helps them out. So they're able to sneak in. But the only way to sneak into the mine is go through this exhaust port that shoots out, you know, this flame exhaust every 60 seconds. So they got a 60 second window. And I thought this was pretty cool how they were able to time that and get in. Of course, there's a, a droid down there kind of looking, thing, checking things out, making, taking measurements. So it cuts it close. They have to disable the droid and get in. So it's pretty tense there for a minute. Um, what did you think of the design of this mine? Like the setup of uh, Moko running the show, kind of being uh, this tyrant for these these workers, and that whole setup of this mine, the whole you know design, characters, all that stuff. What do you think of that, Harry? Uh, the mine's, I mean, pretty interesting, right? It seems kind of pieced together. It's an artifact of a like another era that somebody's kind of 
running on the on the cheap um like uh just the mining was better once and there was more people and and mm-hmm. better things were going on and he's kind of fallen on hard times and uh he's basically bullying kids to do all his work for him yeah because it didn't seem like there was any adults there handful yeah. of droids and a bunch of kids yeah huh so that reminds but, us of something yeah, of uh, Proximo and all of her slave gangers. Yeah, from so on Corellia. Yeah, that Han and Kira used to work for for uh, Proxima in the same type of setup, right? Right. They had to bring back the the stuff they stole stole to earn their keep. Right. So kind of I don't know rehashed. Um. I guess these kids aren't out in a big city stealing stuff, but they're still all working. It's it's kind of the same thing. You got this gangster who they show in the one scene, like living it up, right? He's <laughs> yeah. up in his private chamber, just stuff in his face. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah. And then telling all the kids like, Oh, it's hard times. You know, we're just, we're not doing so well. And we're it's barely tough to beat you guys. <laughs> Says we're all barely scraping by. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I think this it's a it's another reference to how the empire is ruining things, um, how it's affecting, and they even make a reference to it in this episode. I think it's, it might have been Tech who said this is just like the empire. He got someone who's running the show, and you know he's not very nice, and he's making people work for him and destroying, making things worse. Right? I think he even said something to that effect. So, uh, and I think they did say that the mine was owned by the separatists. Might have even been the mining guild or something. Yeah, I think he said the mining guilds. Yeah. And so when they lost the war, they ended up abandoning it. Abandoning it. And uh, this guy took over, like you said. So, yeah, it's just a bully in charge. And so... The kid helps him out, helps him find where the ship is. They get there, and the hyperdrive has been disassembled and some other parts. So Wrecker and Hunter and Tech have to fix up the ship while the Omega and the kid go to the control room to be able to access the code for the ray shield so that they can lower it when they're ready to leave. And they're going to download it onto this uh, handheld device that Omega has. So they make their way up there. And this is on their way. They stop by, and this is where we see um, Moko just, you know, doing the whole pigging out and eating all the food. And then how what the reward is for the top earner. Top earner. So we see that happen, and then they move on. And I think that motivated um, the kid. What's his name again? Danny? Benny. Benny. Ben. <laughs> they, they, that motivated Benny to turn what do what he did next, right? Because he's like, I'm not the top earner. I got to do more. I got to do better. And so when they get to the control room, he basically alerts uh, Moko to be like, um, "Hey, I, we got something." So because he wanted to get on the the good side of this this boss guy, right? So he he alerts them. They're trying to download the code, trying to figure it out, and in the process. They access this data that shows that they're actually making a lot of money with this mine, but Moko's hoarding it all and only giving the the workers just a little bit. So they have the proof that that's happening. Then he shows up with his guards and takes Omega prisoner. And Benny tells him where, hey, the other guys are at the ship in the hangar. So they go down there and there's a confrontation that ends up spilling out into this big cavern with uh, all the workers there witnessing what's going on. The droids are there. So it's a big showdown. And they have Omega high up on this bridge, and they're like, hey, if you don't give up, we're going to throw Omega over overboard. Um, so as far as this goes, Harry, what do you feel like this was, like with Benny doing what he did, did is that consistent with the character, or do you feel like that was forced or anything? Like, What were your thoughts on that? I actually thought that was kind of a twist because for a minute you're almost 
like I was believing, Benny might ask them to go with them. Yeah, you know, that's what I was escape. expecting. Yeah. Or at least and have Omega after, offer. Right. And then when he sees, like, hey, I brought you this whole ship. You're going to be able to sell it for a ton of money, and I'm still not the top earner? Yeah. Um, you know, he gets kind of the – he's playing favorites, and, and um, but he is motivated to do more, right? Um, which was a, a surprise to me. I thought that would have sent him over the edge. And like, well, forget this guy. Moko's going down. Yeah. I'm going to help the Bad Batch escape, and I'm going with them. Yeah. yeah. I'm leaving this dump. So when he flips the switch there, pushes the button, you're just like, what did you do? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, man? You're, you're choosing to stay here? You're cho- right. You're choosing with... to stay here. Yeah. And um, where obviously these others have it better. They're not starving to death. Um, yeah. At one point, Omega offers a ration pack to him. And, you know, um, but he's still, he's, I don't know, I guess conditioned, right? Mm-hmm to work for this bully and uh yeah so in a way it was surprising to me yeah i agree i was the same way i was like okay they're down echo so they can uh, you know have another crew member join at least for a little while and they're the same age so maybe they team up in omega maybe not a romantic relationship but you know a a good friendship she can have a friend and they could use this thieving skills right and i thought that's where the direction it was going but Nope. And he does say something later, like I think they do talk about him going or just leaving in general. And he's like, no, this is my home. This is all I know. And so I want to stay here. Now that uh, Moko's gone, I'm going to stay here and, you know, it's going to be more fair. They're going to portion out things. So, Uh, but yeah, there's a confrontation and they end up dueling and saving Omega and then Everybody revolts, like, it's revealed that they're actually making a lot of money with this mine. So all the workers get mad, and they they shoot the droids. Uh, the Bad Batch shoots the droids, get, gets rid of them, so they're not a threat. And they all gang up on Moko, and he ends up, you know, falling off the ledge into the, the abyss, the fiery abyss, and he's dead. So then that's when they decide to, to stay together, these workers stay together and kind of work the mines and have a fair profit sharing on what they earn. So, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a, it was a good episode arc. Uh, probably probably won't watch it again unless it ties back somehow. I, they, at the end there, uh, Benny does say, Hey, if you need my thieving skills, give me a call. All right. You know where to find me. So I'm thinking, well, maybe he shows up later. They need him later. So, Outside of that, though, I don't really know what the point of this <laughs> story arc was. <laughs> Other than to show the tyranny of the Empire again. Oh, well, the, the, or the, the indifference of the Empire and allowing all these petty tyrants to exist out here in the Outer Rim. Yeah, yeah that's true. Well, um, well, because that, that, that's kind of like the repeated theme, right, of the Outer Rim. Mm-hmm. You have the huts and the cartels and Crimson Dawn and Black Sun and all these terrible entities really taking advantage of everybody because the empire's focused other places and just doesn't care. Yeah. Well, you think if, if this mine is doing so well that someone would come take control of it, either the, the huts or the, the, the other gangs or even the empire. Like, Hey, this is a, cause the empire does throughout their, their rise and, his duration, they strip planets of their resources and use them for their own needs to build ships, Death Stars, all that stuff. So I'm surprised that maybe that'll show up later in the season or in the future that the Empire shows up to take control of it and they got to go, the Bad Batch goes and helps them out for some reason. I don't know. But if it's that they're making good money, then yeah, why, uh, why aren't those other gangsters taking control of it, at least if it's in the Outer Rim? That's a good point. Um, yeah. And I always think that there's there, – to me, they always leave the possibility of revisiting these planets and people right. open. That they haven't closed off anything, so anything's really possible. Um, Sid, if she finds out that her mind does have Ipsium in it and there's that other mother load under that lake, she's going to want a part of that. Um, 
Yeah. And and maybe that's a future episode where they come back to do a little more mining, and they do find out that the huts or or someone else has taken over. The pikes have shown up, and yeah. um, these kids are in worse shape than they were before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I would if they if it is set up for an even bigger story arc, because they did that a lot in the Clone Wars, where they'd have this episode, and you're like, oh, cool. And then a couple a season or two later, they'd revisit it and be like, "Oh yeah, remember these guys?" And so they, that's definitely a possibility that it could come into play later. Um, especially if you know, maybe a year or two down the road, they come back. Benny's a little older, and he is tired of the place. And he's like, "Hey, I got skills. You need my skills. Let's go do something cool." Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so. I do have to, the question: When you first saw Benny. Were you not wondering if that was Hondo for a for, <laughs> yeah. a, for a second? Yeah, a split second. I was like, oh, it's Hondo maybe. <laughs> and then uh, some, when they first showed him looking through the binoculars, I was like, oh, is that Hondo? And then later on they showed him sneaking onto the ship or something. And I was like, nah, that's not him. Right, yeah. But yeah, where's Hondo? I mean, that, we haven't seen him yet, have we? We haven't, no. Not in this season or last. Definitely not this season, but last season? I don't think so. But yeah, he, uh, he needs to show up. Uh, he's a fan favorite, right? Yeah. Yep. He's. Uh... Um, I did enjoy um, when Benny was flying the ship. He couldn't see over the dashboard, <laughs> so the ship's kind of like all, all over the place. And yeah. when he comes in for a landing, he barely makes it. Yeah. He is not a good pilot. He's this little kid in this full size spaceship. Yeah. Um, that was kind of a, a little bit of humor there that maybe people didn't notice, but I thought it was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. He's kicking his feet there because they're too short and he can't see over the dashboard and um, yeah. he's barely making it. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, the animation, superb. There was multiple points throughout this episode. I was like, dang, that looks so good. That is so awesome. That's such a great scene there. You know, the Bad Batch and their armor, it looks so good. It was so realistic, right? So as far as that goes, that's that's always been top notch in this series and I think it's getting better as each season comes out. So definitely fun to watch just looking at things, right? The scenery, right. the characters, whatever. They, I never see anything. I'm like, oh, that looks fake. or Not necessarily fake, but oh, that's not animated very well. Or, you know, there's nothing like that in this, in this series. So. Yeah. The, the visuals are, are, are superb. Um, I like that. We keep seeing different planets too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the movies, the original trilogy, right? We don't really see much. We don't get to see a lot. We don't see what the, the whole galaxy is like. And then in the prequels that expanded it, clone wars expanded it. The, um, the sequels expanded it. And now we're still seeing these new planets and these new places. And Mm -hmm. it's just always fun to see like how diverse the, the entire galaxy is. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely doing some good world building which is important. I mean, that was one of the big things about the prequels that did a lot of world building, set up a lot of new places and new opportunities and a lot of potential. And this is doing the same thing as far as that goes. So, yeah. Yeah. And we, we see some character development with the, the crew tech and uh, Omega. They kind of got into a little argument and they were able to work things out and, gain some more respect for each other. So there's that. I think the two big points, two big takeaways of this, these two episodes is, uh, the bad batch learning to adjust, you know, to each other. Now that they're down a member, there's just the four of them. And as well as how they, the, their relationships are growing and evolving over time. And then just, you know, the tyranny of the empire and how it's affecting everybody. So I think those are the, the two big takeaways. Anything yeah. that you noticed? Um, yeah, just while you were saying that about Tech and Omega, made me think um, while I was watching it, I texted my daughter and I was like, Tech is a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's, you know, just, he's so analytical, he doesn't have much empathy. Yeah. And um, the way he was talking to Omega, I was like, wow, man, you are not a nice guy. Yeah. Um, but um, he actually realized it, right? Like you said, yeah. there was they, they came back together and, and worked together, and and he pointed out says, yeah, you know, there's things that I need to work on. Um, so there's that character growth, um, which is 
one of those things where I, I always try to point out to fans that, that don't watch the animated stuff. Like, this is every bit as good as, as the live action with character development and growth and mm-hmm. the overall storytelling. Yeah. Because they have more time. There's multiple episodes and multiple seasons. They just have more time to work with it and have more experiences and adventures to develop these characters better. So it's definitely worth your time to watch it. 100%. Yep. Um, there was some more Indiana Jones vibes that I want to bring up just from that final scene. You know, there's a bridge, someone's hanging over the edge of it. And it's like a rope bridge almost too. Yeah. yeah. And then there's fire, like the Mola Ram type moment with you know, the fiery pits. No, there's very subtle. I think it's not overt like in some of the previous episodes, but, um, I definitely got that a little bit from this episode. So, but yeah, Indiana Jones five is coming out this summer. So maybe there's some direction from top dogs and Hey, we need to kind of plant in the minds of our viewers. Hey, Indiana Jones, remember him? He's coming back. Yeah. I don't know. That's just a, a thought I had. So, um, yeah, I mean there, we could throw some parallels in, right? Um, the, uh, the mine ride, they're, they're tumbled through that, that rushing water, the mm. river, the underground river. Yeah. Um, they spent a lot of time underground. Um, even the kids. end scene with Moko, slave kids, yeah. and the way Moko fell there, you know, um, the way Molaram was, was holding on to the stone and then yeah. tumbled off. Um, there, there's some definite nods. Um, yeah. There's it was real subtle, yeah. um, but they're definitely there. Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool to have a Indiana Jones animated series, though? Oh, it'd be awesome. Something like this where it's, you know, two, three, four seasons and 10, 12 episodes a season of the adventures of Indiana Jones. That would be pretty cool. Right, because then we don't have a 70-year-old Harrison Ford <laughs> being Indy. 80-year-old Harrison Ford. Uh, 80-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it can jump to whatever time frame. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then you could play off the movies, like you find out what happened to Marion after Raiders of the Lost Ark. All, all kinds of opportunities. Yeah. yeah. So maybe there it's like a test to be like, okay, do people like these type of episodes? This swashbuckling Indiana Jones type episodes, and if they do, then hey, let's do it. So it would be cool. Anyways, any final thoughts, or did we did we get them all out? Um, I think that's everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Overall. The, the first alone wasn't great together it made a, a decent arc um, not the strongest of the season but definitely not the weakest either yeah yeah not a lot of meat on these bones these episode bones but uh, it was entertaining I didn't walk away saying oh this is stupid I hate this show or like some people have but um, looking forward to the next episodes hopefully that's gets back into the overall story of the Empire and I want to see the Bad Batch actually fight the Empire again, like we saw them earlier with fighting against some stormtroopers and stealing stuff from the Empire. So I kind of like that those type of episodes better more than these ones. So maybe we'll see that in the future. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, really, like get them on a real mission versus just yeah. trying to make some money. Like yeah. let's work for the soon. idea that they can do some good. Yeah, I agree. Um. So, yeah, thanks, guys, for joining us. Uh, We'll be back next time for the follow-up to the next episode, and we'll talk about that some more and see what the Bad Bad Batch is up to then. Uh, We want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out uh, the videos we have there. We have um, this season's Bad Batch reviews up, so check those out. Like the video, subscribe. Helps us out a lot. We appreciate it, so... Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And good soldiers follow orders. My order is to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow those orders. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. We'll see ya.